welcome back to another episode of the Sister Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Gold Chain Diva, and this is my sister. Y'all know who this is. Miss <laughs> BD, and y'all already know that's what a Z. Look, we're we going to give our sister a good old round of applause. Happy to see you back here, sister girl. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy to be back. Y'all already know we're just two sisters. With a lot to talk about. And y'all know we always got a lot to talk about. Listen, just because we ain't been on this couch and on this here camera listen, with y'all, we still been chatting it down. Chatting, okay? Chatting. <laughs> listen, matter of factly, we chatted for a whole hour yeah. before we pressed record. We really did. We really did. This is crazy. We always have so much to say look that's how i be when you don't see your sister you know life be life and adults and yes. be adults and you know mm. you know you just gotta catch up when you can catch up yes. but we said we know my good sis was free today and we said you know what just pull up and tell the good people how you been listen y'all <sighs> Let me tell y'all, life has been life in. Life has been life in. I feel like the last time that I was on Sister Talk, I feel like I was in the process of closing, my, on, your house. closing on the house. So your sister's house is closed, okay? I moved in. <laughs> I'm in, I'm settled, um, man, being a homeowner is a lot, mm-hmm. we moved in, uh, during the winter, we had no heat for a while, mm-hmm. that was crazy, <laughs> um, and you know, I was always talking about, oh, you know, like, I'm ready for summer, I'm ready for summer to be here, y'all, summer is here and it's hot, look, now she's Listen. ready for the year to slow down, <laughs> when I told her, look, go back to episode one, I said slow down, here we are, we Yo. now seven months into the year, I'm tired of being hot, <laughs> I'm tired of being hot, okay, I I got 17 air conditioners in my house because we don't got central air you and me both okay but anyway um adjusting into moving into you know our new home is amazing um with having a new home we have a new baby and i'm not talking i wasn't not the win-win baby I, i bought a dog and his name is honda it's uh, so Gold Chain Diva's God dog. Yep. yep um, the, but now, now God, he has a, a God, uh, God brother. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just you know being a a a, a dog mom and you a, a a cat mom. It's a lot. Yeah. Listen, people don't realize. No. Okay. Look, they like to talk crap about us because we don't have no kids and we be complaining. <laughs> However, having animals <sighs> is just as much as of a job. It really is. It, it really is. is and he's getting me on a schedule your sister's not being late to work no more <laughs> oh my gosh so well, look, look at god look listen. at god killing two birds with one stone <laughs> so but other than that man i'm just blessed I mean, there's one more piece of news i'm not gonna push you to share it so your sister <laughs> your sister got engaged y'all <laughs> Listen, she can't hear the I sound effects, it. but I just, I just put the scream sound on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got um, engaged. Um, I haven't shared it with a lot of people. I kind of been keeping it in my, you know, little circle. But yeah, I got engaged like a day before my birthday. So listen, our sister is thriving out here. Okay, yeah. look, and as you can see, we friends in real life. Yes. Okay, so just because y'all ain't seen my sister, <laughs> don't mean we beefing like B Simone and her best friend. Absolutely not. <laughs> never, never, never. We ain't never. beefing. We just mm-hmm. had that. You know, life is life, and like you said, absolutely. Now, from my perspective of life this week, yes, man, what's been I going just, on with look, you? Look, 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 I just gave you the whole rundown. It's it's been a, it's been a marathon for me. Yeah. Um. But one of the things like I'm not going to recap 100 percent of what we just talked about before we press record. Mm-hmm. However, um, the one thing that I did want to share was you know as they all know I've been unemployed since March. I got laid off. Right. And so I've been very clear about you know this being bet on me season. So here we are, March, April, May, June, July. That's five months. Okay. Yeah. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about what that may look like from the outside looking in Mm -hmm. and how that kind of has been like impacting me. Okay. Because I feel as though like most people looking at my situation from the outside looking in will be looking like, but what are you doing with your life? Like, what are you doing? You need to have a job by now. Why don't you have a job? And I want to say that even though I don't have a job right now, this literally has been the best five months of my life. Let me say this, y'all. I can contest. This is the happiest I've seen you. And I ain't having muscle spasms no more. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Girl, you used to be having that muscle spasm all the time. I'm stressed out. I'll be rubbing. I'll be rubbing the shoulder Listen, for you. And she ain't lying. <laughs> Listen, sis used to pull that bio freeze out real bad. But like, oh, girl, you got a knot. <laughs> I used to be. Rubbing. It used to be bad, but like literally, this has been the best five months like that I can recall in a long time. Like, mm-hmm. I really like. One of the things I want to speak to is just like the leap of faith that I feel like I've been taking lately. And maybe that's why, like, when it's not supposed to make sense to everybody else, mm-hmm. because like, it, like this journey, this time that I'm in right now is not for everybody else. Right. And so, like, I just got to keep reminding myself that, like, when people keep saying, oh, well, when are you going to get a job? Like, have you heard from, like, it's kind of discouraging when you hear from that way. But at the same time, like, the people who know me know that literally since March, I've been, like, grinding. Listen, it's bet on me season. And I'm serious about that. Like, I'm just, like, right now, I'm just heavy in a faith season of just, like, letting go and letting God. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that even though, you know, I'm getting to the end of the road with this unemployment. Right. That God can do a lot in two months. Absolutely. So, I just wanted to start off by saying that. Um, this past week, your sister has like started working with um, somebody locally in the area who's producing a film. So shout out to Preston Dent, okay. who's currently producing the 717, the real Harrisburg film, um, coming to a screen near you very shortly. Um, so I did want to, you know, definitely give him his uh, hand claps because, you know, even though I'm new on the team. It's been going well, and I'm very impressed, and I know this movie is going to be crazy when y'all see it. So, we're just going to go. No, it's okay. Listen, I know two normally come. Bless you. <laughs> um, so, now we're just going to go ahead and spill the tea. Spill the tea. Spill the tea, y'all. Look, put your pinkies up. Put your Excuse pinkies me. up. So, guys, first things first that we're going to spill the tea about this week. And we talked about on a previous episode with my sister when we talked about when Gypsy Rose (laughs) first got out of jail. Yes. So, (laughs) it's been a lot going on with Gypsy Rose since she's been home. You know, it definitely has. I feel like since she's gotten out of jail, it's been like a rise like she's become more popular people have more things to say about her she literally like is famous yeah and it's just like dang girl. but like maybe no <laughs> <laughs> i was about to say no look look no too far too far i uh, never mind no take that thought <laughs> no but i get what you're saying because it's like Bro, she like rose the fame from killing her mom basically like and being in jail so now we get to see a criminal you know, rise the fame. Now, un- understandably, you know, her story is a sad story. We yes. talked a lot about her condition yes. and how her mom tricked her into believing that she was sick and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you do feel bad for her on that regard. But then there's a lot of people on the internet that are saying that she's a scam artist. That she was right there with her mom participating in those activities. Like, she knew what was up. Right. That's what they were saying. And, you know... <sighs> As long as it went on, I I can believe that. Like, I feel like it went on for a very long time. And it's just like at some point in time, you get older and you're like, man, am I really sick? Am I Mm -hmm. really sick? Like, mm, do I I really have all this going on? So I can I can see where that, you know, I can see where that's coming from. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, you know, Gypsy, when she first got out, she was married to a specific guy. Yes. And I didn't watch the TV show, but apparently there's a TV show. Did you get to see any clips of it? I've seen a little bit, of, a little clips. Not, not, not many though. So a lot of people were talking about like their dynamic on the show. Okay. Um, and basically like they were saying that their relationship, like, I guess looked weird and like he was like controlling and like stuff like that is that the vibe you kind of got so uh, yes i feel like once i seen and you know tiktok mm-hmm. <laughs> of course once i seen them say that he looked like her mom re- oh <laughs> they did say that re- reincarnated yeah i couldn't look at the relationship the same I right because re- it's like really at that couldn't. point like are you like low-key like still obsessing and loving on your mom because they look alike yeah, and they did a side-by-side alike. picture and i'm just like that is it's creepy it's creepy that's all i can really say it's really creepy that is very creepy but nonetheless so the guy she was married to when she was in prison 
is no longer the guy that she's married to right now. Right. <laughs> so we bring up G- Gypsy Rose this week because she announced that she's pregnant with her new man. And everybody's like, well, who's the baby's, who's the baby's pappy? Yeah, they want Mari to get involved. <laughs> Look, out of pappy. <laughs> Look, they trying to figure out who the dad is. That's a hot mess. Yeah, it, it definitely is a hot mess. Um, and like you said, like she has been rising to fame very quickly. Like ever since she's gotten out of jail, you know, now she's writing memoirs and books. Now she's showing up on all types of TV shows and things of that nature. Um, and of course, when she announced this pregnancy and she did it by way of like ultrasound, like that she had at home and stuff like that. Um, basically, you know, she's reflecting on the fact that she's looking at it as an accomplishment because apparently her mom told her that she would never have children and kind of put her down in that way. Okay. And so now that she's actually conceived, you know, it's an accomplishment to her. And now she's looking at it like, look, you know, I'll never treat my kid the way my mom treated me. My face has been broken up this whole time. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is, and this is a genuine concern. I'm feeling like she might do the same. Never mind. I hope not. I, I, I just, I just, that's a concern of mine because it's just like your mom did this to you. Not saying that she can't break the cycle, right? but, but breaking cycles are hard. Yes, they are. And the apple don't fall too far from the tree. Yep. And if she truly has not like taken the time to go to therapy and like heal from some of those traumas, some of those traumas, like whether she wants to pass them down or not, will get passed down <sighs> subconsciously. Yeah. So Gosh. I don't know. How do you all feel about Gypsy Rose and her pregnancy? How do you all feel about her rise to fame? Should we be glorifying firing fighting a murderer? Yes. That's what it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> look, simple as that. Yes, 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 simple. Mm. But, you know, next thing on the spill the tea. Ooh. Next thing on the spill the tea. Ooh. Now, These you two. know, we, we, talk, we <laughs> talked about Jonathan Majors and what? I think it might have been two episodes ago. I talked about Jonathan Majors and basically talked about how I feel like him and Megan Good's relationship is a fluke. Yes. <laughs> yes. And I feel like they're both just like, you know, they audition for the role of a lifetime and they playing this thing to the very end. But as everybody knows, we saw a video clip. What did we see a video clip of, Miss Beatty? Well, <laughs> you know, Michael Ely. Mm-hmm. I feel like him and Megan Good's relationship had they've been knowing each other for quite some time. You they know have what I mean? and they played in um a film together. I believe it was was it the perfect man that they played in together? Or the perfect guy? Or best man? Not not the not, best man. Not the best man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, y'all know not the best man. Um, never mind. I can't think like a man. Think like a man. I couldn't think of it. I'm like, why can't <laughs> like, think we know it had something to do with a yeah, man. Yeah, something with a man. So, anywho, um, there was a video clip of Mike Michael Ely um hugging Megan Good. And, and not just hugging her. He picked her up. He swept that girl off her feet. Okay. He picked her up. She didn't want to. You know when you hug somebody. Well first of all. Anyway. She hugged him. She said. He picked her up. And Jonathan Major was like. Mm, mm. Doing everything but looking what? in his. In his in Michael Ealy's eyes. Doing everything but acknowledging the fact that his girl just disrespected him in his face. Now, please, please tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. Was he into something like Jonathan Majors where he beat up his significant other? I don't think so. So he didn't. It had nothing to do with abuse. No. I don't know why he gives me. Well, probably because he's played a couple couple (laughs) questionable roles. Michael Ely, he now we're going to get to divorce in the black in a moment. Mm. But Michael Ely is another one like Corey Hardrick that is kind of like a typecast with certain things. And he plays crazy well. Yes. So that's probably why you got that feeling. I don't. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> that, that's definitely the feeling that I got. And I'm just like, did he beat up somebody that he used to date? Or is Listen, that just in my uh, head? I don't know. Look, I, uh, look, I don't know. If, look, if he did, let us know in the yeah, chat. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that he did. But the thing about it is... The whole situation is crazy to me, right? <laughs> the whole situation is crazy to me because, like, 
All right, I know we talked about it, and I don't think we ever really got a chance to really discuss it on the podcast, Mm -hmm. but we talked about, like, the appropriate way to hug, like, (sighs) some people of the other sex. Absolutely. We wanted to talk about that. We never got a chance to. Absolutely. But now that we're talking about this, it's totally relevant. Absolutely. Now, Miss Beatty, I'm going to ask you. Yes. Since you are, you know, an engaged woman now. Yes, ma'am. What's the appropriate way for me to hug your man? Don't. (laughs) <laughs> she said no <laughs> listen <laughs> no listen no <laughs> to be totally honest um a side hug i feel like that would be appropriate and i know oh, listen i need to do better because i don't like side hugs well okay so okay <laughs> let me let me explain this let me let me say it like this if you are in my inner circle and i have you around malcolm i am okay with y'all hugging face to face i'm okay with that but I'm sorry. It's, love. Just, it's it's a time limit. There there's a time limit. And there was a situation where a female that I just met hugged him and did one of these. Oh no. Yeah, that's that's a bit much because one, <laughs> as a big busted woman, I am weird. And I, f- I hate the fact that I am worried about this because I feel like it shouldn't be sexualized. But like, because I'm a big busted woman, I'm conscious about that. I don't necessarily be wanting to put my boobs on, on a man's man. chest. Like, honestly, like, to be honest with you, like, even on, like, not even trying to be on no weird type vibes, like, even with people in my family. I don't even want to do that because it just makes me feel weird. Like, right. I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's too much contact. Yes. But. Even at the same time, with that being said, like, I also don't like the side hug thing. I will side hug people because based, I, I hug people based off of their comfortability. Gotcha. Like, it probably shouldn't be that deep. But it's but it deep. is No, but it is really that deep. Because, though. like, I'll do a little side hug, but to me, because I'm so genuine, I just want you yeah. to feel the warmth and the right. love and, the, you know, all that. Right. I like to embrace people. Um, because otherwise I just feel like that side hug thing is a little fake and I'm just like I could be fake can be. I'm fake with but it can be it, it, it really it really can be but I don't know I but don't the know. main the main thing I believe is the time limit okay there was no reason why Michael Ailey should have walked up did he spin her around I, in my mind, he did. Listen, mine still in my mind, that. he spun that woman around. <laughs> listen, he, he did something because she held on to that hat. It was moving too fast. I know. It was too much movement. I know. It was longer than five <laughs> minutes, but anyway. Listen, you don't miss that girl that much. I'm sure you got her phone number. If you want to talk to her. You probably ain't allowed to Because you was her. acting hella Joe, sir. Like, he was on, he was on uh, Mr. Steal Your Girl time, like Usher. So it was a little bit much. It was a little bit much. On, the fact Michael. that he picked this woman up and her two feet left the ground. <laughs> now, in my mind, this is in my mind why this situation played out like this. Now, mm-hmm. okay, so my theory in the last time that we talked about Jonathan Majors, my theory was basically this is a PR stunt, right? Okay. So I feel like this was also another PR moment. You got to think about this. This nigga, he coming back up. She's also come back up. Come mm-hmm. on, that was no coincidence that now she got a movie. Right. Like, come on now. Yeah. Like, pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> so, to me, I think this was another PR stunt. I think that we got to see this play out the way that it did because they trying to prove to us that Jonathan Majors is not an angry, angry black man. Because what he should have did was said, no, nah, bruh. Set her down, please. Nah, bruh. You don't need to be picking up my woman like that. But listen, a face tells you everything. Hell and yeah. his facial expression when he picked her up and spun her and walked away and then brought her back, he looked like he was pissed. Yeah. He was absolutely pissed. Um, body language says a lot. Now the crazy thing to me, right? So apparently Megan Good made a statement and she addressed this situation formally. Oh so apparently she says, so we're just going to edit out the first part of the video where Jonathan and Michael exchange a big hug first and then speak like life over each other before he gives me a big brother hug. 
LOL, shaking my head. Super unfortunate how people don't have anything better to do than to project on others and intentionally perpetuate negative, misguided commentary on life snippets they have no real context to. It's sad. Sigh, but still, God bless y'all. Now, my thing is this, okay? If that's the case, where the video? Yeah, because I because where's see the this? video? Because I want to see this. Where's the video? If we got this encounter on camera, why didn't we get those couple of min minutes of them speaking? Like, let me tell you something. Like I said on the last one of these last episodes, body language would tell you everything you need to know. If your mouth don't say a damn word, mm. I don't give a damn what she say. Jonathan Major's body language was as if he, that was the first time he didn't seen that man all day. Yeah, because he trying to figure out why you picking up my woman. And honestly, I felt like when he started getting the tuck in them glasses, he was really ready for whatever at yeah that point. he just looked like he just was not happy about that whole situation and megan once he put her back down on her feet and she looked at her man as a woman would do she looked like she was a little like she uh, knew she was wrong because she could have got she should have wiggled out of his arms to say uh, uh that's enough or something like come on now yeah that, that furthermore lets us know that this relationship is not real because you didn't even consider how your man would feel about another man picking you up like that i don't give a damn none of my big brothers little brothers big cousins uncles none of them be picking me up bro well, first of all, i'm bigger than megan but so what yeah it doesn't matter. i don't give a damn but if i was smaller they they don't pick up none of the smaller cousins yeah around <laughs> ain't nobody stuff. picking up yeah. nobody like that so no. i don't want to hear that crap mm -mm. but anyway listen we've been talking about this this is something that you know happened a little bit ago but we had to give our spill on it <laughs> what are your thoughts what are your thoughts on the jonathan majors making good situation like was it disrespectful or was it really a big brother type situation and do you think that he really addressed him beforehand because i don't think that he did and even if he did it wouldn't have been nothing to say Oh, bro, I know I spoke to you earlier, but still. But hey, what's up? Because you know cameras are around. Absolutely. Come on now. You know what it's going to look like. But Ooh, anyway. Anyway. Anywho. anywho. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, on the topic of Megan Good, we talked about the fact that she has a new film right now called Divorce in the Black by Tyler Perry. With her co-star, Corey Hardick. Hardrick. Hardick. I don't know. Yeah, it sounds like. <laughs> Tia Mowry's ex-husband. There we go. With his fine self. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's fine, so listen. But do we think he's fine after this movie? I don't know. Um, I'll let Miss Beatty give her thoughts on what she thought about this movie. So let me first by saying I watched this with Malcolm. I was very surprised that he his attention span is terrible. Mine is too. So <laughs> I'm very surprised that he actually, like he said, it caught him within the first. Yeah. That's because they just snatched this man out the goddamn casket in the first five girl, minutes of the movie. Girl. <laughs> girl. First of all, Tyler, the first person who, ever, who I ever heard say this is you. Tyler Perry is a genius. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that. I know you watched a lot of like the sisters and stuff, and I wish that I and had I, listen, I still be watching the sisters. I wish let me that tell I tell you, yeah. For those who watch the sisters, Gary been Gary in lately. Anyway, yeah. Well, listen, <laughs> I know how good you said those shows are, but this movie was excellent. I felt that it went a little bit longer than I would have liked it to. Mm -hmm. Um, at some point, I was ready for them to get to the end. Mm -hmm. I wanted her to beat him up like enough, and mm -hmm. and right. I already yeah, knew get that get it back. was that it was gonna happen but the build up to it was amazing mm -hmm. and i for megan good to not have been in the movie in a little bit right mm -hmm. like when's the last time she was in the movie well she hasn't been in the movie in a while but you know she has that show on prime harlem mm -hmm. mm, yeah so she has been still okay. acting okay okay and i forgot about that and i did watch that but i feel like she did a really good job mm -hmm. and i feel like her and um cory cory had great premise yes I don't right. know. I enjoyed it. So, my sister started off what she just said by saying I was the one who told her that Tyler Perry is a genius. And I still stick beside that. Yeah. But I think I got mixed reviews on this film. Really? I got mixed reviews. Um, I'm not going to say that it was a bad film. Mm -hmm. I will say that I probably won't watch it twice. Really? Um, <laughs> I'm surprised. First of all, like I said earlier... I knew they was going to be on their best BS when I, they pulled that man out that damn casket in the first five minutes of the film. I was like, uh-uh. 
Listen, that's one thing I always say too is that Tyler Perry is going to give me the right amount of drama that I need. Yeah. And that was hella dramatic because come on now. Y'all ain't had to pull that man out of there Listen, like that. Listen, she said get him out. T. She said get him out. So, that, like you said, the action, I think for me, that was why I have mixed reviews. It, because the action was so high in like the first five minutes of the film. And then in true Tyler Perry fashion, now she meets this beautiful black man. And she's the damsel in distress and he saves her. And so it's a period of time, like literally, we got the first 10 minutes of the movie that's high action. The movie is over two hours. Yeah. And so then the whole rest of the next hour and a half, she loving on this nigga. And then the last 10 minutes of the movie is where the rest of the action happens. Yeah. And so for me, don't get me wrong. The film as a whole had a great message. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it touched on a lot of things that hit home for a lot of people mm -hmm. especially with domestic violence and things of that nature childhood traumas um you know being tied to a family that has a certain type of reputation and feel like you got to live up to that and that's why i think i have so many mixed reviews on it is because i wish that they would have took more time to develop the storyline mm -hmm. so from a filmmaker perspective mm -hmm. i wish that they would have took a little bit more time to delve into a little of his background and maybe how he can you know communicate and dealt with his family you know kind of give us like that dynamic of okay how did Megan fit into his family and you know all of these things like yeah. I wish we would have got to see more because I was a little irritated that she like I was mad like he was how you move on so damn fast was you cheating on me mm. because she moved on hella fast <sighs> She moved on hella she, fast. She I, she did. She did move on very, very fast. But also, it was progressing. Like, with him being mentally, and I guess I assumed, and it did show he was physically too abusive. So, as a woman, you know, you start to cut your feelings, cut your feelings, cut your feelings, and cut your feelings. And one can only take so much, and she seemed like she was I, I, I definitely get that, because you know? one, when a woman's fed up, mm. <laughs> no matter how much you beg, <laughs> it ain't nothing you, you can, can do, do about, about it. it. Mm. Yes, go ahead now. All but right. no, listen, I get it. We're both women. We know yes, how that is. Absolutely. You know, when a woman is done, she's done, mm -hmm. and you want to know that she's done. Absolutely. So I totally get that. That's not the problem that I think... I have the issue with like I've just wished that like it would it just progressed too fast mm. like I just wish that like yeah it was not it was fine for her to you know okay I've seen this man around he seemingly has been interested in me or whatever mm. the case may be I just would have liked it to I don't know I just I'm tired of the damsel in distress thing with Tyler Perry I got you it, it, like I, I don't think that she like ugh, I didn't want her to have a savior Got you. You wanted her to figure it out and be an independent woman. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't want her to have a savior. Um, so I think that was where my issue like was with the film is that, like you said, it was it was too long. It was it, long. We didn't need a two hour film to get that. I took an intermission in between. I'm not even going Surprisingly, to with my short attention span, <laughs> you did it. I did it. Okay. Surprisingly, <laughs> yeah. but I just remember thinking to myself, like, okay, so Corey Hardrick said this is the biggest film of his life. We only got to see him in the first ten minutes, and he has not been in the rest of the film. Um, I know it ain't over. So when is the action going to happen? He said this was the biggest film of his life. I mean, he said that Tyler Perry paid him the most money he's ever been paid. Oh. Okay. Oh. Good for him, I guess. I mean, it's definitely a good <laughs> it's, it's definitely a good thing for him. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a good thing for him. But <laughs> like cuz Corey, don't get me wrong. Corey Hardrick, he's a he's a good actor. But he also really is a typecast. He's a typecast. He plays that role well. That's not the first time he played a role that was like that. He has a Netflix movie with uh, Kiki Palmer where that's her brother, her older brother. Well, Brotherly Love. Brotherly Love. Mm -hmm. And honestly, if we're going to be totally honest, I feel like he did a way better job in that movie than he did. I mean, he, 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 he constantly gets typecasted as the gangster. Yeah. He has. He's also on the show. 
<laughs> or was on the shower because I haven't caught all the way up. Yeah, yet. I haven't watched. But it. he was on the shower. But I feel like he he has that same temperament in everything that he plays. Mm-hmm. And so, and he also played. And I don't know if you got a chance to watch it. It's a film called Karen. Um, that I believe when I watched it was on the all black channel, Okay. but basically, um, him and his wife move into a, a neighborhood and the woman next door is a Karen. Oh no, I've, I've heard, but I, I never seen So it. he, he's a great actor mm-hmm. and I do think that he deserved to be paid, you know, a good salary. Yeah. So I'm glad that Tyler Perry saw something in him, mm-hmm. you know, to be able to say, you know what, like, I'm gonna go ahead and give him his opportunity to, you know, I guess be seen on a larger scale, um, especially because, you know, Tyler Perry's name was stamped on it. So, of course, people are going to watch it just because of that. Yeah. Um, but according to different sources, like Megan Good was the reason why he got chosen, because apparently Megan Good vouched for him and said, hey, like she had a choice and she chose him. Mm. So for Megan Good, that was very nice of her. Yeah, definitely very nice. Um, now to comment on her, Megan Good. I mean, she's been in the game since Friday, since she was a kid, since it was Eve's Bayou. Like she did amazing, amazing job, and I didn't expect anything less from her. I feel like she's an amazing actor as well. So. I have no thing, nothing bad to say about her. Like I said, though, the movie wasn't a bad movie. I just personally. Could have saw it in about an hour. Yeah. <laughs> in about an hour. I didn't yeah. need like two hours it of that long. film. It was long. Um, but, you know, let us know in the chat your thoughts if you did get a chance to watch it. Um, oh, and before we move on. So, Lonnie Love. You know Lonnie Love. She's a comedian. She is on the t- She was on the talk. The show that had um, Adrian Bellion. Yeah, and, yeah. Okay, so she was the um, the heavier set brown skin woman. Okay. Um, Lonnie Love actually made a statement that said, "I love that Tyler Perry is paying black actors now, and I wish he would hire black writers and directors that have experience to help him with his movies. He could improve the movies and make them award worthy if we stop trying to save money by doing the writing and directing himself." Mm. And I will say, like, don't get me wrong, Tyler Perry is a mastermind when it comes to his writing, and I know he spits out scripts like it's mm. nothing. Mm-hmm. But I do agree with her that. His 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 um productions are seemingly falling flat all across the board in some regard because we need something fresh. I was just about to say that. You took the words right. So out. hire me. Listen. <laughs> hire me, Tyler Perry. <laughs> hire, hire me. <laughs> Listen, I don't even care if I'm just the person that types it down as you speaking it. Listen, just to be in the presence. Of course. Listen, like, hire me, okay? I got a lot of imagination. She got a lot going on up there. <laughs> look, I got, look, and I love you. <laughs> Listen, but I ain't like the fact that when we went to Atlanta, I couldn't even pull up to the Tyler Perry Studios gate. They was on it. They said, no, y'all can't even stop. That's crazy. But I got to see it and it was beautiful. It's large, it's big, but I would love to see it in person. So Tyler Perry, hire me. And yeah, what are your thoughts on this whole situation, guys? Let us know in the chat. Um, But yeah, we're going to move on. It's time for and we gotta do it for once for, for old time sake. We do. I, I'm gonna do it with the mic in my hand. Here we go. <laughs> I'm excited. It's time for conspiracy talk. Conspiracy Conspir- fingers. fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen. So today on conspiracy talk. All right. So I told Miss Beatty before we started recording that like I went down a whole rabbit hole last night on this situation. Um, it's about Hello Kitty. Mm. And everybody knows Hello Kitty. Excuse me. But what you don't know. Now, the reason why this is not the conspiracy, but I'm going to just tell y'all this because it's relevant and it's new. So apparently there's a video going around on TikTok of this woman on like USA, Good Morning, America, whatever it is, talking about Hello Kitty is not a cat. She's a girl. What? And apparently she her name is kitty white she has a whole name so she's a girl she has a boyfriend she has a twin sister and she also has a pet cat that furthermore is why she's not a cat because she has a cat so a lot of people are like well is she a furry like is she a girl like dressed as a cat right like because make it make sense she has whiskers like she has paws 
Um, so that's a little confusing. They're they're trying to play in our face once again and tell us we don't believe what we believed all these years don't make sense no more. Oh gosh! But the conspiracy is this: according to um, the internet, the woman who created Hello Kitty apparently had a daughter, a fourteen year old daughter, that was diagnosed with cancer of the mouth. And basically, th- listen, it, it it it's chilling. Apparently, this little girl was diagnosed with cancer of the mouth and the mother was hopeless and, you know, took her to all types of churches and pastors and had them pray for her and all these different things. And the girl never got better. So the way the story goes is that the mother sought out a demon. Oh, no. And basically made a deal with the demon. Oh, no. And the demon said, well, I'll save your daughter. If you create like a cartoon or something like that, that basically furthers like, you know, this evil agenda, whatever the case may be. And that's where apparently Hello Kitty was born from. And that's why Hello Kitty doesn't have a mouth to reflect the condition that the daughter had because she had cancer of the mouth or whatever. Oh, no. Oh, no. First of all, (laughs) no. And they're saying that Hello Kitty in Japanese means Hello Demon. Oh, my gosh. Does it does it mean that? Listen, <laughs> all I know is when I lifted up, they said, "Hero, <laughs> hero, kitty." <laughs> so I don't know. Oh, I don't no. know. I tried. I tried to do my research, but um, the woman's name is like Yuko Shimizu or something like that. So it's like you know, in, in Japanese and Asian countries, everybody has like the same name and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's really hard to find sound facts on this woman because there's so many other people with the name. Right. But the story does pop up. Now, I don't know. Is it a conspiracy or not? Yeah. Because now at this point, like, it it makes me feel eerie because I'm just like, okay, like, I literally just bought Tootie. Her birthday is coming up. I literally just bought her a little bracelet and earring set that has Hello Kitty on there. And now I'm just like, dang, like, if it has demonic origin and stuff like that, like, I really don't want to give it to her. Listen, and Shadia loves Hello Kitty. Mm -hmm. And that just is, now I'm going to be. I need to look at Hello Kitty and see if it doesn't have a mouth because I don't think I've ever noticed. I mean, no, it doesn't have a mouth. And then, like, that's the creepy, like, the creepy. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, so, I don't know. I went down a huge rabbit hole with that. It was very cringy and scary um, when I was watching it on TikTok. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I never would have thought it. So is it a conspiracy or not? I don't know. Let me know in the chat if you know more information than what we talked about tonight. Because that that just got me. Okay. It's Mm. eerie. I wouldn't put, put put it past anybody, honestly. Because at this point in life, it's just like everything is right in front of our face. (sighs) And you got to be careful because we know that they pray over certain things. And so I just told myself, I said, look, I bought this present for her with the kindness of my heart, with no bad intent. So I'm just going to pray against any demons that may be tied to it before I give it to her and let the good Lord, you know, just take care of the rest. Yes. Ooh, (laughs) gosh. Yeah. So look, food for thought for those Hello Kitty lovers out there. You know, do your research. Please do. (laughs) Mm. Well... We got one little topic for y'all tonight before mm-hmm. we let y'all go. We got one little topic for y'all tonight. All right. One little topic. So, there's a video going around on TikTok of a older black woman. She's about 34. And she's basically talking about um, the girlies don't wear heels to the club no more. And sis made a video about it and then proceeded to give us an outfit check (laughs) and the internet ate her up. So take a couple of moments to look at this video. I don't know what's happening to club culture, but the girlies are not wearing heels in the clubs anymore. And as a 34 year old, I know I don't look my age, but as a 34 year old, do we need to come out of retirement and teach the girls how to wear heels or like what? heels you need to shop for when going out in the club because the amount of flats and sandals that I saw is just like part of the thrill of going to the club is dancing on the couch in your heels you got to figure out how to how to strengthen those ankles so you don't break them like how to maneuver like it's a rite of passage I feel like you don't appreciate wearing a flat if you aren't dancing on the couch in the club I don't know, y'all. There's just something about a cute little heel, you know? You just gotta 
We got to figure it out. We got to bring heel culture back to the clubs because what are y'all doing? What's going what on? Are y'all doing? What are y'all even doing? What's, what's the purpose of What's the purpose of going to the club if you're not going to dress up? I don't know. Now, after watching that video, <laughs> what are your thoughts? <laughs> so, when you originally had me watch it, I'm like, oh, sis is about to have on some Louis Vuittons or some. Look, they say stiletto pumps, pumps in the club. club. And Listen, she did not. She had on chunker heels. That's yes. what I call chunker mm-hmm. heels. I'm comfortable in wearing chunker heels because I have weak ankles from mm-hmm. sports. Now, I. Uh, her outfit was terrible. That's just what it is. <laughs> her outfit was terrible. She shouldn't have. And. What did she say? I don't. What? I don't look thirty four, and everybody was like, "You do, yeah, <laughs> you do." Listen, we don't look thirty two. Oh my gosh, you're still thirty one. I got, I still ah. got about about a month. Ah. Well, we don't look like we're in our thirties. Yes, that. Let's part. Just, let's just say. But that. I hope not. No, but I still get carded. <laughs> Me too. But especially on a day like if I wore something like this, they just like, oh, can I see your ID? Yes, yes you may. You listen. Boop. Yes, you may. <laughs> <Boop>. <laughs> but no, like yeah. I, I agree with you. Like, so she goes on to talk about, oh, like you need to have your heels on the stand on the couches and the couch. Girl, get your behind off of that couch. Please. Come on. You still standing on couches at 34, ma'am. You need to grow up. That part. Like you said, it was given auntie. It was given 34. Mm-hmm. Because let me tell you what. I'm not wearing no damn stilettos. Okay. If I'm wearing heels, I'm wearing my little auntie heels. Listen, and I'm going to be comfortable and, and cute. cute. Thank you. I'm going to act my age. Thank you. Yeah. So ultimately, everybody told her that she should have never made that video. She should let the young girls do what the young girls going to do. Because obviously, y'all not in the same category yeah because these young girls if they stepping out with some heels on they stepping out with some stilettos some yeah. pointy toes they stepping out with something real sexy and ma'am you went to the club with your graduation heels on <laughs> <laughs> listen she called them graduation heels. at the big age of 32 Comfort is key. Listen. And that's okay. Listen. But you should have started with that. And you yes. should have just kept it at that. Mm. And shouldn't have been giving nobody advice about nothing. Unless you want to give advice to our age group and say, you know what, girls? We got to do better. We got to have more stability. Then we could have took you a little bit seriously. Absolutely. But now the girlies are sizing you up because, like you said, they're saying the dress was ill-fitting. The shoes were not the best. No, they look like uh, she might have got them from Charlotte Russe. Something. And ain't nothing wrong with getting shoes from Charlotte Russe. Listen, I had a pair. I about to say, and I still got a pair. And I don't really wear them because they high as crap. They are chunkier heels. Yeah. But they're not the most comfortable. All right. I don't give a damn. At this point in my life, I've always been the friend in the friend group that can't keep on heels all night. Girl, you know I am. So, at this point in life, if I'm wearing heels, my goal is to wear them all night. So, whatever it takes is what it takes. Listen, as you know, I love sneakers. I got, listen, I'm going to put them in there. I got them <laughs> on right now, okay? I love me a good sneaker. I love me a good sandal, and I'm not going to be uncomfortable for no At one. all. Don't nobody even care that much no more. No. We wore heels back then, not like out of necessity. Mm-hmm. We wore it back then because we were just extra back then. Yes. We were hella extra back then. Like, you got to think about the generation that we come from where we wore heels, and half the time we had a blazer on. Girl, not the blazer days. <laughs> Young as hell wearing a blazer to the club. And we thought we was doing something. <laughs> so, oh, like. Oh, good times. Listen, bad times. <laughs> like, delete every photo y'all got of me. Don't go too far back on my Facebook page. Girl, okay? you, was, you was cute. Stop it. <laughs> listen, listen. Shoot. Look, I got some memories I want to forget about, okay? <laughs> Girl. Oh, but, yes, this daggone lady, she should have just left it where it was. And um, congratulations, ma'am. You played yourself. <laughs> Look, we got to give her the. <laughs> we got a bore. We got yeah. a bore. 
But yes, that was the episode for tonight, guys. I hope you enjoyed having our sister back on the couch, you know. Send her some positive vibes, positive wishes, and all that good stuff. You know, send her some some good notes down in the chat. Yes. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we still trying to get the channel to 200 followers. Right now, we at 128. I think I've released two episodes. I only got one five, one subscriber since then. Come on, y'all got to do better. So get your life in order and subscribe. Please. <laughs> <laughs> but thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of the Sister Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Gold Chain Diva, and this is our good sister, Miss BD. And y'all already know I'm not going to say it again. That's what a Z. <laughs> <laughs> Look, and we just two sisters with a lot to talk about. And even if y'all don't see it on camera, we yeah. always going to have a lot to talk about. Yeah, either way. Either way. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in and have a great night. <laughs>